So, um, really, there are several parts to that. One is a, a procurement process that will allow competition that includes open source solutions. Absolutely. And so, but we're talking about the, the issues are often procurement uh, and policy. And if you get past those, then the products compete in an open market, as Adam Smith would have envisioned. So, uh, procurement policies are, are one uh, technique there, so you can make that choice in some sort of rational manner, not in a way that sort of, you know, tips the hat one way or another. Um, the other question you were asking about how different nations should do it, that's, of course, up to them. But it also has to do with how you, you see it in places that have less of an installed base and a high incentive to innovate and say, the third thing that could help, and this is a policy question, is that software development in the U.S., particularly within universities where innovation mostly happens, has the same time that software went private, that we changed from the sort of idea of openness originally, is the Bayh-Dole Amendment passed. It used to be when you got federal money to work on something, that your product belonged to the people who paid for it, that is, the citizens of the United States, in this case. In other countries, they don't have Bidol, but Bidol allows universities to patent or copyright works created with federal dollars, and then, through the miracle of tech transfer, which almost never gives us money, <laughs> um, we're supposed to become wealthy. What usually happens is the tech transfer offices are allegedly self-sustaining, and they take the largest percent of that. So, uh, and actually, what they found when they reviewed the tech transfer strategies across the United States was only ninety, I think, uh, ninety percent of them were money losers. Yeah, exactly. It, and only two percent made money. But legislature. Everyone wants to be that two percent. I tell you. What. So, uh, people that are there should be aware that they'll be taking comments on Bidol, its impact, and its future. Uh, as a congressional committee to do that. Right. And that's one very direct way that we can pay attention for what is appropriate to be protected in such a way and what ways are appropriate for universities to get direct return on subsidized federal investments and which ones are not. And so three policy areas, procurement, uh, this kind of availability and bondable stuff and uh, drawing on the intellectual, subsidized intellectual endeavors at universities.